Hello my brothers and sisters of the order, welcome back to the order, I'm Celtic Templar and today y'all we are actually going to be talking about, that's right, going back to none other than who is deadliest. Now I wanted to do this a while back but the problem is I had a lot on my research uh, table so yeah this one was a little uh, problematic to deal with. Now I want to put this out here, this one was a one-sided victory on uh, Deadly Warrior, and I do have to put this out here, y'all. We are not going on the numbers that we see on the idiocy of the show. In fact, the show got a lot of things wrong. We saw that with the Gladiator versus Apache. We saw that with the Viking versus Samurai, and guess what? It's going to happen here as well. So, well, maybe, because one to the major fact, a ninja is a ninja, and a Spartan is a Spartan. This is not going to end well for the ninja. So, where is this entire thing going with this? Now, I hear many people already asking, Templar, when it came down and asked and such, they're asking like me this, Templar, would this actually work? Would the Spartan really win and such? Well, we're going to see, because we're going to have five on five. Five ninjas versus five Spartans. However, the thing is, with the Spartans, we're actually going to give them uh, one uh, leader, who which would wear pretty much anything bronze or iron made, while the other, so, such as two of them, would actually be wearing Lionel Thorax, and the last two would actually be wearing hardly any armor, as the common Spartan would have actually been. Now, uh, I do have to put this out here. I've had many comments on the last how, Who is Deadliest video, and... Uh, Especially with the Spartan versus Samurai, and uh, there was a Samurai enthusiast that was kind of insulted that I explained that there was no way a Samurai would win against a Viking. And in such, we have to understand, Vikings were meant to win a fight and fight at a type of time. And in such, I had to put these arms and equipment at the same points that they would have been seen. However, since it's a Spartan versus a Ninja, that's going to be a little bit different. But we do have to understand that there is a major difference. One to the fact we have to understand is the show got some things very wrong and some points right. But the thing is, there are a lot of weapons on the ninja side that do not work at all for this entire thing. Shall we get into it? Alright, weapons and shields. So, the Spartan with their weapons and shields, we have to understand, is that the Spartan weapon and shields would have been pretty much the following. The Dory Spear, a Javelin, the regular Hoplite shield, as well as a Short Sword, and including they would have also used a Zephos and Falcata. Uh, sometimes, it depends. If you know what those two are, they would be these two weapons. A Falcata and a Zephos. So, pretty much, yeah. This is a primary cutting weapon, so I don't exactly understand why, but some it was stated though in one point in time the Spartans had used a sword like this, but then gave it up. I think the reason was because they were trying to get a better weapon to destroy the person behind his shield, rather than risk destroying the armor. I don't know if this is true or not, but I don't think this would work out for our Spartans. The second weapon would also be this elongated sword, which was primarily meant for thrusting and cutting usage, and which was pretty much made out of one full steel. And in such though, the Spartans, actually what they did, they took a Zepho sword and they shortened it down to a shortened blade, meaning it was perfect enough and light enough for both cutting and thrusting, yet also still kept the leaf-shaped blade. So what does that mean for us? It means it's a lot more power compared to this. In other words, this thing may be long, but it does not have that much power as we see with a Z, uh, well, small Spartan short sword. And as such, the Zephos is a great sword, don't get me wrong, but due to the weight I feel in this, it's a lot heavier than the short sword which I used in my last video on the Spartan Hopolite. So, yeah, we gotta put that one into play. So, 
what weapons would they have probably seen this? Well, I would have actually say we would go with the short sword with this guy. Another type of thing we also got to go with is the Dory Spear. The Dory Spear is actually a very dangerous spear because, one, it actually has two points of dangerous forms of contact. One would be the top blade, which is known to be the main, well, part of the weapon. However, there's that butt spike that is also dangerous. Now, why is this dangerous? Here's the thing. Just imagine a Spartan formation that's pressing forward on you, and guess what? You got pushed to the ground, and that butt spike is going to go into you. Or as well, even if you broke off the blade on the top, guess what? The next blade on the bottom, the butt spike, is now going to be used as a spear. In which, it is stated to be used as such. In fact, at the Battle of Thermopylae, it stated that about 14 Spartans had lost their tip of their heads of their spears during the first battle. I don't know if that's true or not. We're just going off of research and such. So, how dangerous is this thing? Here's, here's my point. Imagine the Dory Spear a butt spike as the spike bayonet that we see from, say, World War I bayonets used by the Russian army, or even that of many spike bayonets that were used pretty much in the Amer from the American Revolution to the somewhat modern day. So, how dangerous are these things? Here's this in which uh, these things are extremely dangerous because it doesn't cut, cause a cutting wound like a no modern day bayonet, like we see like with a like well with a cut wound. It actually causes a hole, which makes it a lot harder to stitch up later on. And in fact, you can actually get it infested and later die very quickly, and or painfully depending on how you put it. So yeah. However, what about their javelin? Well, same thing with the javelin. The javelin has a spike-like uh, head on it, which is meant for throwing. And in fact, I've actually held that thing, and these things are very light enough to cause damage to their opponent, yet that means I don't need to worry about pretty much any problems. And the fact is, I can actually carry my main spear, my dory spear, with my said javelin. And in such, behind the shield formation, guess what? I'm getting ready to throw my spear, yet the ninja would probably not realize it until the last second when I throw it. So, the dory spear with the javelin and shield formation, that's perfect. So, how dangerous would this be for a ninja? Well, it would be very dangerous. Now, on to the shield. Now, I know you all know how dangerous hoplite shield is. Hoplite shields are heavy enough and very, very constructed enough to protect the whole body. And the thing is, uh, if it was, say, even five guys, for example, I could actually see a Spartan formation pretty much turning themselves into a circle formation just to stop the ninjas from throwing their weapons at them. And in such, this is actually what we might understand. The Spartan Hoplite was a moving tank formation that in which was hard to destroy. In fact, not just Spartan Hoplites, but any Hoplite in ancient Greece was very hard to destroy. In fact, the only reason uh, the Spartan Hoplites were later on replaced by the Macedonian Phalanx was because the Macedonian Phalanx defeated the Hoplite formation. And in such, we can understand why. However, I'm always wondering this, what might happen if a Hoplite ever fights against a Legionnaire? So, we might actually have to do that sometime in the near future, because you gotta admit that would be pretty cool to see. Uh, but back to the top of the hand, when we take a look at the Spartan Shield, or Hoplite Shield, it is meant to be used as a walking uh, shield. It's meant to be a moving wall. And the worst thing, like literally, this is actually the worst thing a ninja could ever deal with, is when a Spartan does a frontal charge. If you don't know what this frontal charge is, I actually did it in my last video when I was uh, doing my how-to video on the Spartan Hoplite. And in such, I did try my best to do the Spart the Hoplite charge, as it's known, because they would charge with a forward design shield formation just to push into their opponent and destroy them. And in such... That's probably going to happen to some of our ninjas, 
because the fact is they don't actually have a shield to stop this. And I do have to put this out here, y'all. This might not end well for the said ninja. However, we do have to go also into their armor, so why don't we? Okay, now, armor. What is the armor of the said Spartan? Well, the Spartan would have used a mask of type of, well, weapons and armor. So, pretty much what would have been his armor? Well, uh, if any of y'all are thinking it's always this helmet, the Corinthian helm, you're slightly wrong. The Corinthian helmet was a later design model by, say, pretty much by somewhere at during the Battle of, say, uh, Thermopylae, some say. I don't know if that's true or not, but yeah. But we will c include the Corinthian helm because it was a massive uh, hedge posh of helmets that they would have used. In fact, mostly, they would have not used the Corinthian helmet. They would have actually used the Conciel helm, I think it's called, which is that's a dome-shaped design helmet, which causes perfect breathing, perfect eyesight, and perfect hearing for, for your formation of warfare. In such, we could see why the Spartans would have probably used it this much, because, one, it's going to help out a lot more than this thing, and in such, Spartan helmets... Or, in fact, this is also known as the Spartan Helmet. I don't know why, uh, but I can see why, because it was primarily used by Spartans more than anyone else. Now, when it came down to these helmets, it is stated, though, that they would have had pretty much the crest design and such to protect the entire head. And as well, with the shield formation pretty much just covering their entire body, I don't think they would actually need any other type of helmet rather than the Conciel. So, eh, we're going to go 50-50 on this one. But, however, what about the rest of their body? Well, one would be the major fact that one of our guys is probably going to have a bronze cuirass. So, yeah, bronze cuirasses are actually extremely tough, as they showed it in the, uh, well, well, type of uh, episode that they tried using the sickle-bladed weapon. I can't remember what it's called, so... Uh, yeah, this is actually where it's going to cause a major drawback for them, so yeah. However, the uh, Kushurunagaga, which I can never pronounce it, so I just call it Sickle Weapon, okay? Anyways, because as soon as he makes an impact, he just tries to go up, but that's not going to help out at all. So, technically, the Spartans are still going to win. The only thing I could see... This helping out would be pretty much later in the long run, which I'll get to very soon. But the bronze cuirass, it's good. So what about our two other guys wearing the Greek Lionel Thorax? What about them? They're also good. In fact, the Greek Lionel Thorax is a mixture of linen and glue. And in such, has been known to have been used not just by ancient Greeks nor Macedonians, but as well by other Greek uh, future empires, such as Ptolemaic Egypt, uh, later Macedon, and so on, and so on, and so on, because there are a lot of, uh, well, empires that came, Greek empires that came after Alexander the Great's empires fell. And as such, it was also used by the Roman Hapolite, or Hopoliti, whatever you pronounce it as, and, and now, yes, Rome did have its Hopolites. And as well, it's also used by the Carthaginian hoplites and pretty much by pretty much anyone in the uh, region of the Mediterranean. In fact, it's actually stated that the Celts might have copied off of it and added a form of padding on the inner type form. We don't know if that's true, but as well, even the Persians designed their own version and was actually seen at the Battle of Gargamela. So yeah, it's pretty good armor. So how tough is this armor? Let's just say it's actually known to stop arrows, and I'm not talking like broadhead arrows, I mean like bodkin head arrows. So that's saying something. And in such, I have actually have seen many people test this armor out, especially with recurve bows, which are technically the most common uh, bow at that time in the Middle East. So, what might happen if it gone against the Yumi bow? I don't know, because it's kind of a hard to describe situation. Because Yumis are a lot different compared to recurve. And in fact, recurves are stated to be a lot more powerful than a, well, Yumi bow. So, 
I guess it might actually stop it or maybe even cause the arrow to bounce off. So that's saying something. Uh, now a major thing I do have to explain to y'all is the Lionel Thorax, it was extremely cheap and yet it was perfect. So this is what I'm going to see happening is that even though it's cheap armor, it still works. However, I do have to put this out here. We only got two Spartans on the very lower end, the most common Spartans. Them, I think I see, will have a little bit of a problem because the fact is they won't exactly uh, have pretty much that much protection. So in such, they're going to end up being only having, say, their helmet, their shield, and maybe some greaves, maybe not, we don't know. But yeah, so that's about it for those guys. However, though, that brings me to my next armor. Greaves. Yes, the Spartans wore these. These are greaves. These are pretty much probably one of the coolest things I love about the ancient Greek hoplites as well and such. And if any of y'all want to see me wear these, here's the thing. I will leave a link down in the description below for the hoplite, uh, Spartan hoplite, which I did a little while ago, as I said. So this, uh, these things are tough, and... That's saying something, and most of the time these would have been made out of bronze, iron, or whatever they can get their hands on. And such, this stuff, it's actually meant to stop certain weapons. And in such, when I wore this, the Havalite shield was this bare, like about, like about three or three or four, like about the size of my palm of my hand away from the edge of the Havalite shield. So that's saying something. So, in such. This guy's technically walking like a big giant tank. Not good for our ninja. Not good at all. However, this brings me also to another weapon that would probably have been used by the common Spartan Hoplite, and that would be slings. Yes, Spartans did use slings for ranged weapons as well. However, these were known as the uh, type of slave units or whatever, and such. They were known to pretty much be skirmishing units. They were not meant to be uh, seen fighting on the main formation battlefield. However, let's just have our two skirmishers be the two lower ranked Spartans. And as such, that's actually what most of these guys were. These skirmishers were young boys pretty much that fighting at birth. And as such, they would have used this mostly, but sometimes fought alongside their fellow Spartan formation fighters. In other words, it was technically like the following. The main body would be pretty much development of this hop main hoplite army, while skirmishers would move around and attack. This is actually how they would work, and pretty much as soon as, say, another Spartan hoplite division came clashing into the other, it's actually stated that the skirmishers would go around and attack from the rear, or whatever. And if, sometimes it would also be skirmisher on skirmisher action, and it's very dangerous. So, how dangerous, though, is the sling? Actually, that's saying something. The sling is very dangerous. The Romans nicknamed these the mini catapulti. And it's such, uh, if you were to get hit by one of these, uh, some slings are actually big enough to be as big as my fist. So, just imagine if slinging a rock the bit, as big as my fist at somebody. That's not going to end well for your enemy. Which... I was wanting to add this into the weapons, but I decided to put this into range, but meh. And such, though, you gotta imagine of how dangerous this would be, especially if it's a curtain of, uh, like, literally. It actually stated that during a famous battle in Thermopylae, there was, known as Thermopylae and such, there was actually, uh, uh, but no, not the Thermopylae that we see from 300. I'm talking about a uh, different Thermopylae. It stated that Celtic warriors who raided Delphi and such were pelted with a curtain of stones upon them. So that's saying something extremely horrifying on how dangerous these things could be. So in other words, a group of Spartans or whatever could use this thing as this. A throwing weapon and such. Yeah, it, 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 yeah, that thing is horrifying just hearing that. I don't know if y'all can hear that, but that, I can, and it's horrifying. So, yeah. Alright, now let's go into the arms and armor of the ninja. So, what are the arms and armor of a ninja? 
that's a thing. They're pretty much a lot. For one, let's take a look at the blowgun. Blowguns, we have a major problem here. Blowguns are good, but I don't think a ninja is that good to get a shot in into a well-armored, well, Spartan. Because here's the thing. Pretty much the only things that were ever exposed to on the battlefield were pretty much anything that the helmet wasn't covering or that the fact that their feet were showing. Let me show you. Now see, with me wearing this helmet, and then I soon lift off my shield, the only thing you got a shot at are my eyes. And even if you try and shoot at them, I'm just going to lift up the shield. And that's not going to end well. So, would this work? Uh, that's a 50-50 chance. Because, one to the major fact, I can actually only see it. I literally can only see this working. I can only see this working, and only if, the fact that the Spartans are asleep, which ninjas are known to be assassins, not, well, outright to jump out in the middle of the area and just attack. They attack their opponent either when they're walking through or marching through an area, like in a massive column formation, like we see a type of tactic at the Trudeberg Forest, for example, when uh, the Germans actually attack the Romans. So, what does that have to do with the ninja? Kind of everything. There are assassins who would which would use this type of a form to ambush their opponent without them knowing. So, maybe the blowgun could work if they're a really good ar uh, type of marksman. And in such, with blowguns, it's actually not that hard to actually hit your target. Because literally, it's like, <sighs> like forward design, like right where you want it. You blow, and it goes where it goes. Problem is, though, is that range. In fact, blowguns are not very long to ninjas. In fact, they're only like about this big, so not exactly good enough, if you ask me. Uh, would it cause damage? Maybe. However, it, what would cause problem is for your the Spartan Hoplite would be when it's actually doused with some sort of poison, especially from a blowfish. And that stuff is poison enough to kill somebody, and which I don't know why this is a delicacy in Japan, even especially if it's poisonous. However, I have heard that it's now illegal for anyone to uh, digest this or anything like that, or any restaurants to sell it. I don't know if that's true, but you don't see me going to Japan just to eat that. Uh -uh. Okay, now let's go into throwing distractions. Yes, throwing distraction. This is a weird one. And when I mean weird, I mean very weird, but I can actually see this working. Uh, that would be a kunai and a, uh, a shikuram, or a shikuram. I don't know if I'm mispronouncing it in any way, so yeah, I'm sorry. But these are throwing distraction weapons. And in such, they are not meant to, uh, well, pretty much kill. Of which, uh, if any of y'all are major fans of Naruto, here's the thing, don't watch the anime, uh, you might want to actually watch real life uh, performers when they use it and they explain that it's not exactly meant for killing. It's just meant to distract your opponent, meaning you throw it right towards them and they're meant to like block, it's, and as soon as they block, guess what? The ninja's gonna come right up and attack. Problem is, this is not still not gonna probably work for them. Because the fact is, that Spartan's gonna have a shield and that shield is going to protect pretty much their entire body. In fact, as I said, the only two people I could actually see the ninjas somewhat winning against would be the first two lower ranked guys that hardly have any armor. And in such, that's the major drawback. Now, there would also be the uh, Kushimaga Samaga. Eh? I, I am not good with Japanese, I am sorry. Uh, but in such, this is a sickle-like weapon, and in such, it also has been known to have a chain. This might cause a problem for the Hoplite. Reason being, because imagine, that chain being whipped around every time, and in such, it could easily just get around the Spartan's foot, and he could easily just yank him back, while another ninja comes from behind and probably finishes off the Spartan. This might actually work. Might. Thing is, though, Spartans are a military formation design, meaning 
As soon as he flings the thing around his leg or something like that, guess what? He's just going to try and block it with his shield. He's going to crouch down. It's not going to end up working so well. Uh, so pretty much that's not going to work at all. Then there's also a weapon known as the Yari. So what is a Yari? A Yari is a type of spear-like weapon. I don't think this one would work either because it looks like it's just asking to get yourself kicked in the ass. So I'm not even going to try with this one. Uh, but then there is actually a claw-like weapon, which this one is actually really cool. This one is a, a, a Teko, I believe it was, in which these are pretty much, what every time I see these things, I'm always thinking of Shredder from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, back when I was young, I used to see this, and yeah, it pretty much a lot of ninja weapons in this, so yeah. Uh, then there's also a lot of other ninja weapons like size, uh, nunchucks, and whatever, but I did not include nunchucks because... One, that does not seem like it's going to work so well against a guy with a helmet. Two, is the fact that pretty much also with a Psy, it's not going to end so well, seeing as you don't have a shield to combat against his shield, so it's not going to work. However, the claw-like weapons, these could actually work, especially for grabbing his weapon, especially his spear, his sword. And guess what? As soon as he does that, you can easily just finish him off. This might actually work. Might. Now, the reason I say might is because... This is kind of a 50-50 chance, and in such, it was a rarity this would ever work. And even when it came to fighting against samurais, ninjas would rarely use this thing for a major reason, because they didn't want the fact that the weapon could easily slide down and slick right through their hand. So I don't know, maybe that would not work against these guys. Oh, it's not looking so good for the ninja. Now, there would also be the Yumi, as I said before. However, the Yumi bow, not going to work out so well. The guy's fully covered, and in such, he's wearing good armor. Except for the lower rank, too. So, this is not going to end well. Ugh. However, there is a slight bit of chance that they would actually win, especially with the fact that they did wear a slight bit of armor. However, this was a type of light cotton. This was light cotton dress which would be underneath the said, uh, well, robes or whatever they were wearing. And in such, while wearing the robe, it would pretty much look as though they are slightly bit fat, but, eh, it was kind of the best option to stop a certain weapon, especially a katana. In fact, yes, the katana got stopped by these weapons. But however, that, when speaking of swords, that brings us to our very short sword that they use, which is a two-handed design version, I don't think this one's going to work. This one, I do not see it's going to work at all. There's a major drawback with this thing, and that is, when it comes to cutting, it's not going to work so well. I mean, the only way I see a ninja probably doing that is if he lands behind a said Spartan, which is a rarity that's ever going to happen. Spartans are what you might call a very hard sixth sense type of people. In fact, it is stated that when it came to fighting, they knew prior before their opponent would ever make the first strike from above. So, I don't know if that's true or not, I'm just going off of the information I've actually had to read about. But as well, there are also other weapons ninjas use, such as uh, black eggs or whatever, had, which either had ground gra uh, glass or even uh, hot chili peppers. Yeah, yeah, which, here's the thing, that's kind of like uh, pepper spray back then. So just imagine getting that stuff in your eyes. But the problem is, as I said, it's not going to be easy getting stuff into the Spartans' eyes. Spartans are known to cover their freaking face as soon as something gets thrown at it. So, I don't think this is going to work out so well. Okay, now we're going to be taking a look at their pros and cons, and as well their tactics. So, what are the tactics and of the, well, Spartans. Well, that would be the shield formation fighting. And such, they are perfect at it. Meaning, it's going to give them great defense and also a good offense. In fact, they are known to actually even press their shield into a formation design while charging at their opponent. Would this work against a ninja? Maybe. However, 
who would actually win entirely with it is kind of up to our best imagination. And it's such, we do have to understand that the pros and cons, or the tactic of a said ninja, are a lot different. So, what are they? Well, his pro is stealth, ambush, and sneak attacks. And as well, his tactics are pretty much assassination. So, what does this mean? Well, this might give him the first strike. Maybe the first strike. So, what would it be? You'll soon find out. But in such... The pros and cons of a Spartan are pretty much strength and formation type warfare. Meaning, he's going to have a lot more brutish strength to defeat a ninja. A lot more than the ninja has a chance of killing a Spartan. So maybe we should take a look at the outcome. Alright, now let's take a look at the outcome and the entire thing. First, we're going to have to do a look at both type of views, either during the day and night. The reason I'm doing both outcomes is because the fact during the night, I think the ninja might have more of a chance, so we're gonna see. But we're gonna have to see the full effect if this was to come out. Now, let's first take a look at the day and see how it goes. The ninja's creepily crawling along and the Spartans are pretty much this in their camp, resting or whatever, and guess what? While creeping along, they see two lightly armed Spartans. They want to go with them first. Or as well, they see a Spartan without their helmets, which sometimes at rest, I do have to put this out here, Spartans, when they came to being at rest, they would not exactly remove their helmet, especially in enemy territory. They would actually wear it like this. Now, I can't exactly, uh, let me see if I can do that, because it kind of hurts every time I do this. So yeah, they would be somewhat like this. It would just pretty much still cover their neck and their head. The only thing that would be exposed would be their face. So, pretty much the armored Spartans, that would probably be a little still difficult to hit. So, we gotta think this one through. Who would they go for first? Well, my best bet, they would actually go for the lightly armored troops. And as such, they would use, pretty much, well, a blowgun, mostly. And just pretty much shoot them with that or hit them with a Yumi. So... Would that work? Maybe. It maybe would work. Problem is, I don't exactly see that working out so well, especially on the last three. And as soon as those two go down, guess what? The ninjas pretty much know that they have pretty much just killed them. But guess what? Spartans are going to end up rushing forward with their shield formation at the first sight of one. And guess what? The ninja is probably going to get his butt kicked or two, or three of them are. And it's such, I cannot see anything else happening from this but the fact of the complete annihilation of the ninja. So, two Spartans go down, but yet three remain. While the five ninjas that remain get slaughtered very quickly. Because the fact is, those other Spartan type, well, warriors, they're dressed in armor now. And this is not going to help out the ninja. The ninja is just going to die. It's just... Yeah, I don't see this working out for them. So what about during the night? Well, the Spartans are now asleep. And guess what? It's a lot more easy to creep up behind them because they're wearing their armor. Problem is, uh, I do have to put this out here. As I remember just saying, the Spartans have somewhat of a sixth sense. And they actually feel in tune with their surroundings. Even if you manage to somehow get behind one, it's still not easy. In fact, it's actually stated that during a famous battle at Kurukurta Kilkla, I cannot pronounce this one, uh, but you get my point. It's technically stated that it was along a mountainside, and in such, the Spartans actually had themselves to the backing of the mountain to make sure they were kept protected from the rear. So Spartan is going to probably stay behind there in order to make sure that they don't get, well, seen. Or pretty much uh, get surrounded and such like that. So would it work for the ninja? Ugh. They're, the only way I can actually see them doing this is if they crawl down the cliffside, which they were known to do. Problem is, so were Spartans. 
So, would the ninja be able to do this? Well, here's the thing. Uh, me shooting a blowgun down range and zoop. No. Shooting a Yumi down range or down the freaking cliffside. Nope. That is not entirely workable. So, would this work? No. The ninja is going to have to do a frontal charge forward in order to do this. And the thing is, I don't exactly see this helping out the ninja at all either. The only thing they're going to have a chance of doing is probably trying to sneak in from the sides in order to kill each one of them in their sleep. Problem is, in the, long, in the distance between it, it depends on who they kill. And sadly, the Spartan wins hands down. So, pretty much, Deadly's Warrior got this one right. I don't know how, but that's how it happens. But, yeah. Uh, now, I hear many people are already seen, but Templar, the ninja, would use hit-and-run strategies in order to attack their opponent. Well, yes, but the problem is, even if they do that, it's not exactly going to end well, especially if there's a whole Spartan army. And the thing is, I gave the ninjas pretty much an uh, ample amount of chances with this, especially since there are only five Spartans. But the problem is, uh, since there's going to be probably a massive army, that's not exactly going to help out well. And, and such, the ninjas, an assassin, they're a mercenary. They're not a, uh, well, type of person to deal with this type of situation of a huge army. So... Pretty much, it's Spartan who would win. But if y'all have any other ideas on how it would have ended and such, please let me know in the comments below. Like and subscribe for more videos. Also, click that bell button for notifications. And as well, I'd like to hear any of y'all's ideas on uh, who should face who and such for the Deadliest Warrior and such. I will be doing, hopefully, pretty much a couple of others very soon before the month of October. Because as soon as we get into October, it's going to be horror October immediately. So, yeah. Anyways, guys, I've been Templar. Have a great day. Hope to see y'all in the next one. Mm -hmm.